Hi, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Kate from Beautiful Light Home, and today I will be focusing on a very heavy question. The question is, what is Waldorf education? So the reason why this feels so heavy to me, it's just such a tremendous question. First of all, it makes sense. What is Waldorf education? I know it took me a really long time to kind of understand the general basics of Waldorf education when I first was looking into this two and a half years ago. And after two and a half years of like nonstop research, I'm telling you every waking moment that I have, I devote to Waldorf education. Um, any, like any time of free, any free time I have, I'm listening to podcasts, I'm reading books. Um, I'm diving into any corner of the internet that has information on Waldorf education. And I just feel like it's such a loaded question. And the reason why is because Waldorf education is so layered and so nuanced. There's so many different pieces to it. So I'm going to take on that arduous task today of trying to explain in a very simple and concise way, as much as possible, what is Waldorf education? And the way I'm going to do that is I'm looking at two different things. The first thing I'm going to look at is why does Waldorf education believe and do the things that they do? And then the second thing I'm going to be talking about is how does that then translate into either the classroom or in my case, because I'm homeschooling into the home. So those are the main topics of today. Like I said, I'm going to try to be concise, but we'll see how that goes. Okay, so in order to start, I'm going to do a very high level overview of who founded Waldorf Education. His name was Rudolf Steiner. He was an early 20th century philosopher. And while he was a well-learned man, he had his PhD and he had done years of study, he really had a very keen way of observing the world. So. For him, he believed that there was a spirituality or something else bigger than just being humans and nature, something that connected us on a higher level. So I'm not necessarily talking about religion here. I'm just saying that he believed that there was more to the world than just being a human or just being a part of nature, that there was something bigger that connected us. Now, for anybody who is an anthroposophist or who has really studied Rudolf Steiner, again, like I said, that is a very high level overview. Um, but that formed his core beliefs. Um, and it was the reason why many people came to him with a lot of questions. People came to him asking, how can we be better farmers and stewards of the land? And he had a whole entire philosophy about how we could achieve that. Um, people asked through the practice of medicine, how can we better serve the mind, body, and spirit? So people came to him for a myriad of different questions. And he had a philosophy for himself where he wouldn't just necessarily talk about something without being asked a question first. So he kind of had to sit and wait for somebody to ask him a question before he gave his thoughts on the topic. And eventually in 1919, somebody asked him, um, Emil Molt um, at the, in Stuart, Stuttgart, Germany, asked him, um, how can a school help develop the mind, body, and spirit of a child? So in 1919, the first Waldorf school was founded. It was actually the Waldorf Astoria Cigarette Company. It was a school for all, for the children of all of their workers. So since 1919, Waldorf schools have grown and expanded to be almost a thousand schools worldwide in over 60 countries. And what Waldorf education does is it sets out to meet the child where they are developmentally. So like I said before, Rudolf Steiner was a very keen observer of humans and of children, and he would sit and take notes and understand the being that is a child and all of their developmental phases. And his whole goal was to make sure the curriculum met their needs exactly where they were at developmentally. Okay, so that's a high level overview of just the intro to Waldorf education and Rudolf Steiner. But now let's talk about the why. What, what are the philosophies behind 
uh, Waldorf education. What is the why they do what they do? So like I had said before, Rudolf Steiner believed that we were more than just our minds. In fact, he believed that we were a threefold human being. We are our minds, our bodies, and our spirits. So he really wanted to make sure that uh, the education met us in each of those aspects, that we were nourishing both the, or all three of the mind, the body, and the spirit. So you'll often hear Waldorf uh, alums or teachers talk about the head, the hands, and the heart. And how can we take those three elements and nourish each of those pieces of us as a human? The head, the hands, the heart. What Rudolf Steiner understood about children is that while all three of those aspects make up our entire human humanness, each of those is being developed in seven year increments, essentially. So essentially from, the, from birth to age seven, we are developing the body or the uh, hands part of us. And you can see that in small children, they are all doing. In fact, you'll probably hear me if you know me in real life, if you hear my, if you see me with my children and they're not listening, they're not paying attention to me, they're just doing something, I say they are all body, there is no thinking because that is the element that they're developing at that moment. They are all their body. They're trying to get used to this body in this world and understand how to use it. So that is how they are primarily learning from ages, from birth to age seven. Um, then the next stage, the next dominant force from ages seven through 14 is all of the feelings or the heart piece of this. So children from the ages of seven to 14, they're a little bit more comfortable in their bodies. Their bodies have settled down a little bit. They're still very active, so we still need to nourish that aspect of them and their body, but it's the feeling part that's being developed and it's the dominant force at that point. So in Waldorf education, it's one of the reasons why stories are so important. They believe stories can really connect with a child and help bring those feelings, help the learning sink in through, um, in order to really understand their, in order to really uh, impact their feelings. During this age, if a, an emotion is invoked from a story, more than likely they'll remember the lesson a lot better. It has touched their heart. And that's what we're trying to do from ages seven through 14. And the third phase of development for children is from the ages of 14 to 21. And this is really where they're developing their mind. So this is where um, logic and reasoning start to come into to play, where children really start to question things around the world. They really want an expert in all the subject matters at this point. And um, you, to, to really expect them to be very logical before age 14 is probably expecting too much of them. It's not to say that they can't be logical, but it's just not their forte up to age 14. And even from 14 to 21, they're developing that part of them. So. Now, with all of that being said, zero to seven is all about developing their body from, or their will from the ages of seven to 14. It's all about developing their feelings and their sensitivities. And then from ages 14 all the way to 21, that's really where they start developing their mind and their logic. So with all that being said, that doesn't mean that all of those aspects are not included in the lessons at those different ages. They're absolutely included. In fact, I know when I try to plan um, my lessons for my children, I'm always trying to think about how can I include the head, the hands, and the heart into all aspects of it. It's just that those are the dominant forces that are being developed at that age. And you can see that. You can see that in the children. If you just sit and observe your children or your class of students, you can really start to understand what is the most important aspect to them. Is it their body at that point? Is it their feelings or is it their mind and their logic and their reasoning? Now beyond just the head, the hands and the heart and that philosophy, what are the goals of Waldorf education? Waldorf education is trying to um, 
allow students to constantly be inquisitive, constantly be questioning the world around them, trying to get them to understand things more. In fact, it's really trying to foster this never ending love of learning for them, where learning doesn't just happen in a classroom, it happens all the time, every day. So that's the first thing. That's another thing that Waldorf education is trying to accomplish. Waldorf education is also trying to get students to be uh, really good citizens of the world. They know that whatever the world will be when they graduate from a Waldorf education or from high school or college or whatever it will be, once they step out into the real world, they want uh, them to be good citizens, global citizens of the world. And then I think one of the most important things and the things that has touched me the most is that they want the child to be who they're meant to be. So um, it's kind of hard to think about that because of course we all want our children to be whoever they're meant to be. But a lot of times um, society and uh, even as parents, we have ideas of what we want our children to be when they grow up. But uh, Waldorf is all about respecting the child to grow into who they're meant to be when the time is ready, whoever that is supposed to be for the world. So that's a lot of the philosophy behind Waldorf education. Now let's talk about how does this translate to the classroom and to the home. So again, these are some just top level ideas again. So it's interesting because in a classroom setting, the teacher is not looked at as a content expert. Once they get to the higher grades to high school, they are content experts because that's where that logical part of the, the children is being developed. That's where they want a, um, a content expert. But in the younger grades, zero to seven and seven through 14, um, the teacher does not play that role as much. They're not a content expert. Instead, they are a child expert. They're there trying to develop the child. Now, with that being said, from ages zero through seven, Waldorf education doesn't believe in formal education. It's not part of their developmental stage at that part. So while they do have early childhood education and Waldorf kindergartens, they aren't, the, they aren't heavy or really factor in at all, like the reading, the writing, the arithmetic, none of that really comes into play in the ages zero to seven in a formal setting. Now, they are learning those elements, but they're just in a more play-based um, type of environment through songs, through stories, um, through playing, those elements are included, but it's not in a formal sit down manner. So zero to seven, we're trying to develop the body of the child to let that body grow and to really understand how to work itself into this world. Um, and then ages seven through 14, so first grade, is when formal instruction begins. So because the teacher is not a, um, is not seen as a content expert or not a curriculum expert, in a Waldorf education, this is really unique, the teacher does what's called looping. And the teacher stays with the children in a perfect environment from, from first grade all the way through eighth grade. So they actually follow the students every single year and they become student experts. They become uh, experts on the children instead of the curriculum. So I find this really fascinating because then they can really understand who these children are and what their needs are, and that can stay with them and grow with them over the years. So that's the first thing is that teachers are not content experts, but student experts. Um, the other thing that they do is in a typical, if you think about your typical education, you are getting every subject every day, just in smaller doses, right? So I remember in high school, I had every single subject I would have in 44 minute increments, right? In elementary school, we were taught every, every subject every day as well. And I think that has its merit. The difference is in a Waldorf education, um, whether you are in the classroom or I'll be doing this at home as well, um, they have what's called a main lesson. So a main lesson is where you will have one subject. So for instance, Let's say you are just focused on um, algebra, I'll say, at a, in a, at a certain point. You will have just algebra 
no other subjects, from um, for about anywhere from three to six weeks, depending on the main lesson block. So you would go into school, you would meet with your main lesson teacher, and that teacher will have you for two and a half hours, essentially, and you'll just be learning that one topic. Now, in the main lesson, what you're doing is there's three different parts to it. There's typically a like circle time for the younger kids, um, or as they get older, there's a warm up time, and that's all to get their bodies alive, to get their minds woken up. Um, that's to go over everyday practices, like they would go over spelling every day and little math facts every day, things like that. But they would do it in an engaging, where they're most likely engaging their body, waking their bodies up. So that's the first thing. The next part that they would have is. Um, it could, well, you depending, it, the order isn't necessarily important here. Teachers can do it all different orders. You would have a circle time. You would also then have your main lesson study where the teacher would go into um, the new content for the day. So that's where they would be learning all about the content, could be through a story form to really elicit those emotional responses, to really invoke the feelings. Um, it could just be through telling, it could be through, a, uh, it could be through experiments, depending on what the, the topic is. And then they would do a review. So there's three parts. The review could be before this as well, but the three parts are the circle time, the actual new content, and then the other part is a review of the previous day's lesson. And the reason why they always in include a review of the previous day's lesson is because there's this belief that if we go home and we go to sleep, our minds can sleep on the information, it can process the information, and we might come back with new insights the next day. So there's more to it than that, but that's the very basic concept of a Waldorf education is that you have this main lesson, you learn new content, and then you come back the next day and you have a discussion about what yesterday's content was. The other unique thing about Waldorf education is that there are no textbooks. Um, the teacher will be relaying the information to the student and part of that review period every day is for the child to have a main lesson book for every single subject and in that main lesson book, they will normally draw a picture. Um, they'll also include a writing about what they had learned. So they're essentially writing their own textbooks. And the whole thought process behind this is because they are making it their own. They're internalizing it and they are making it their own and therefore the learning sticks. It becomes so much more impactful. Also included in all of this is the sheer fact that um, that arts, the arts are included throughout all of Waldorf education. It's not just a special art class that you go to once a week. Art is included every single day, again, because we are working on our body, our minds, and our spirits. And that's, that's always a connection that you can make with your spirit is through the arts. So then in a typical Waldorf school, they would have other classes throughout the day, different things like um, they would probably have some sort of a physical uh, type of activity like your rhythmy, which is a type of um, dance type of class that all students would take. And they would also have handwork classes. And that's again, trying to get the body involved. So um, knitting, uh, there's Again, it meets them developmentally where they are, but knitting is big in the earlier grades, even in elementary or even in uh, kindergarten, they do weaving um, that then turns into crochet and embroidery and doll making and cloth clothes making for everybody. Everybody would take part in this. And then once they get a little bit older, it would be whittling and woodworking and uh, metal working, depending on what's available to them. So handwork is another big piece of their day is um, really focused on making, creating, and creating something useful. So they always walk out of there with something that they can use. If you're, if you're knitting, one of the first projects might be knitting a little cat that you can gift somebody as a gift. Um, or what, even when you're weaving, they might be weaving little pouches, like nature pouches for themselves. 
So there's all different things that are useful products that they end up with at the end of the day, like these these um, products that that um, can be used for something. I didn't touch on every possible aspect of Waldorf education. I tried to keep this as concise as possible and I really just wanted to focus on the philosophy and then how does that translate in some really unique ways to Waldorf education. So I hope this was helpful for you and I'm hoping to have more videos on Waldorf education and for me, Waldorf homeschooling. And by no means am I an expert. Like I said, I am learning every day. It's just something I am so passionate about it. I feel feel Waldorf education in my bones. Um, but again, I'm not even perfect at it. You know, in my house, I have a lot of things that are not necessarily Waldorf-y. Um, and I wanna show that reality so that this way you don't ever have to feel like you have to be this perfect Waldorf uh, model for the world. Um, there's a reality to the world. We live in a modern world and I'm just trying to show you how can we, uh, how can we bring Waldorf elements to our world every day without feeling the guilt of having to be perfect. So I hope this was helpful and if you're interested in more information, I do have more information on my blog which is just at beautifullighthome.com. Um, I have more videos here so you can like and subscribe and hopefully I'll be back soon. Uh, you can also check me out on Instagram at, at Beautiful Light Home. So um, I'm so glad that you could find us here. Thank you so much and have a great day.